Good afternoon, my name is John O'Brien. I'm going to be talking to you for a few minutes about the topic of interstitial lung disease. This is a diagram of the airway, and as one goes down the airway, one gets to the terminal part of the airway known as the alveoli. The interstitium is the area between the alveoli, the areas that abut one alveolus with another alveolus. Diseases that arise around the alveolus cause inflammation and progressive scarring, which causes destruction of the lung, stiffness, and major physiological abnormalities. And there are various causes of interstitial lung disease. In its early stages, it's inflammatory, but its late stage is characterized by fibrosis and scarring. And there are many classifications of the causes, but it can simply be divided into those that have an obvious external cause and those that are of unknown cause or idiopathic. The external causes can be inhalation of dusts, either organic or inorganic, conditions such as radiation and post-ARDS. This classification is one of the ways of trying to separate out the different types of interstitial lung disease, but even more frightening would be a list of an abbreviated list of occupational and other interstitial lung diseases. Therefore it is a huge topic, but simply there are a number of conditions that are most likely to present with interstitial lung disease. Those are idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, sarcoidosis, extrinsic allergic alveolitis, and pneumoconiosis. And for practical pur purposes, the top two are the ones that we see most commonly. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis was previously known as cryptogenic fibrosing alveolitis, or usual interstitial pneumonia. It is an unknown cause, causes progressive destruction of the airway with a variable course accelerated over a few years or more slow over seven, eight, nine years. It is characterized by clinically by lots of crackles and finger clubbing and scarring on the airway in a fairly typical distribution. On a CT scan you can see these little cysts or honeycomb and this is a section, post-mortem section, showing this hard honeycombed lung. Treatment is controversial but most authorities would agree that there is no effective treatment for this condition. It is certainly not an insurable condition. Extrinsic allergic alveolitis, as the name suggests, relates to an external allergen that causes inflammation. The hypersensitivity pneumonitis can be related to things like avian proteins in bird fancier's lung, various fungi, thermophilic bacteria, and the prognosis in this condition depends on how soon the diagnosis is made and what reversibility can happen. Certainly the outlook is not nearly as bleak as with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Sarcoidosis is a relatively common multi-system condition which is characterized by granulomas, particularly in our country, often has to be distinguished from tuberculosis. Pulmonary involvement is the most common, but there are other typical manifestations such as uveitis, erythema nodosum, which are red painful nodules on the shins, enlargement of lymph nodes and elevated calcium. The diagnosis is usually made by transbronchial biopsy and is characterized by enlargement of the lymph nodes in the chest and sometimes involvement of the lung itself. Sarcoid can have skin manifestations and ocular manifestations and in the majority of patients is a benign condition but that is not invariable and each case will need to be assessed on its merits in terms of end organ damage and dysfunction as far as risk assessment goes. Pneumoconiosis relates to inhalation of various mineral dusts, particularly silica, coal and asbestos. This is an example of coal worker's lung. And this is an unusual complication of silicosis known as progressive massive fibrosis, which is a severe progressive destruction of the lung. The 
development of the disease depends on particle size, the host response, and the manifestations also depend on the intensity of and duration of exposure. Asbestos, as you know, is well limited these days, but we see a lot of asbestos related lung disease. These are typical asbestos bodies, and asbestosis is a progressive fibrosis, particularly as asbestos exposure continues. This is pleural plaque, which is a complication of asbestos exposure, which in most subjects does not cause physiological abnormality. The prognosis and outcome in inhalational disease of dust will need to be assessed individually depending on ongoing exposure, degree of impairment and confounding factors such as smoking. Thank you.